Let me preach a message in your hearing. God never forgets the righteous. Say that one more time. God never forgets the righteous. Lord, use me this morning to preach your word with power and with might. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God never forgets the righteous. You know, the, the Lord has a unique way of dealing with me as he prepares to use me to minister his word to the people of God. Sometimes he'll give me a message in a year in advance or a month or two or a week or so, depending on what he wants, to do, wants me to say and speak to the people of God. And he has a unique way of just ministering to me throughout the course of that week and confirming what he wants me to say. Does he do you like that sometimes? And this week I received a phone call on Wednesday that brought confirmation, the confirmation I needed to minister this morning, what he gave me. And the individual on the phone told me that they had had a dream about me that had come before them about three times. And they said that in this dream, there was an individual who was going to attempt to bite me. And this person was going to try to inflict a major wound upon me. So much so that I would not be able to recover from it. And so we talked on the phone and we talked about the nuances of the dream. And, and there was confirmation there and what God has shown me as well. And I got off the phone and was at the time I was in Genesis studying about Joseph and his dreams and the dreams that he interpreted and gave to those who were around him, his brothers, and to the baker and the butler and to Pharaoh. And God has a unique way of doing things. And I got off the phone and I sat there and I prayed about it and the Lord dropped Psalm 27 and 1 in my spirit. You know, God's word answers all things. The Bible says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes came upon me to Eat up my flesh when they came to bite me. They stumbled. And they fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall encircle me. In this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord. That I We'll seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I'm a Jamaican to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in the temple. For in the time of trouble, he, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And now, everybody say, and now. Shall my head be lifted up? My head shall be lifted up. Not down, but up. Not perplexed, but homo erectus up towards the Lord. Now, there is a connection with this phrase, head being lifted up to the story of Joseph, Genesis 40 and 20. There's a connection there. Let's go to Genesis 40 and 20. And it says, and it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all his servants. You know the story of Joseph, hated by his brothers, thrown in the pit, picked up by a caravan of Ishmaelites and Midianites, Sold into slavery, ends up in Potiphar's house. Potiphar's wife liked him. You know, David had to deal with the lion and the bear. But Joseph had to contend with the cougar. 
He finds himself in Potiphar's house, and day by day she wanted to lay with him, but he encountered and overcame that moral temptation. He finds himself thrown in prison. And while in prison, there was a baker and a butler there. And that butler had a dream. He saw a vine that had three branches on it. And on those branches were clusters of grapes. And he took those clusters of grapes and crushed them and put it into the king's cup. And Joseph interpreted his dream and told him, in three days, your head is going to be lifted up. You're going to be judged. And you're going to be restored to your position. And then the baker said, I had a dream too. And in my dream, there were three white baskets on my head. And there were all kinds of dainties of meat. And then birds start eating the meat. And Joseph said, let me tell you something. In three days, your head is going to be lifted up. You're going to be judged and you're going to surely die. And the Bible says in verse 20 that at a birthday party, and he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. Verse 21, and he restored the chief butler unto his butlership again. And he gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted in the dream. Yet, not did, yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph but forgot him. Joseph here is forgotten while in prison and he does hard time in prison. And for two years he has to wait and wait and wait until his time finally come, came. You know, God knows how to send a crisis and a famine in order to create the demand for his children. God knows how to bring us into fruition, at his vision into fruition at the right time. Could it be that the reason why God hasn't moved yet in your life because there's not enough demand there? God knows when we are prepared and ready to do what he desires. The Bible says in Psalm 9 and 18, for the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. What does that mean? That word always means constantly, perpetuity, and forever. That says that you will go through seasons where you have been temporarily forgotten, but it won't last in perpetuity. You might experience some mountains and some valleys and some peaks and some situations where you say to yourself, I feel like God has overlooked me or forgotten about me. Lord, I've been crying out to you. I've been praying and fasting and serving and giving my all to you, God, and it seems like you've just forgotten me. God says the needy shall not be forgotten forever and the expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. It means that the expectation of the poor, if you have that expectation, even though what you're waiting on God to do has not happened, you should keep your expectation. Because though it has not happened for you yet, God knows how to bring it to pass when the time is right. You know, oftentimes, I'm amazed that when you go to the airport and you board your plane and they tell you you're going to leave at a certain time. They tell you again that the flight has been delayed 10 minutes, 20 minutes, or 30 minutes. And then by the time you finally get on the plane, somehow, some way, the pilot makes up the time that you have lost in the air. I'm perplexed by that thing. So this week, I called a, re a real pilot. Wave your hand, Brother Terrell. I called him up and I said, Brother Terrell, how does this happen? How in the world can you leave past your time, miss your, your schedule, be behind 10, 20, or 30 minutes, and then the pilot still be able to make up the time in the air? And he said, you know, John, there's a few ways that you can discuss that. I'm not a pilot. He is. But let me tell you what he said. He said three things. He said you can take a more direct path to get to where you're going. Or you can find a tailwind, 
or you can go just a little bit faster. Now, when you find a tailwind, it may seem like it's longer on paper than what it really is. But in the air, it's quicker. So it's long when you're on ground. But in the air, it's very much so quicker. Then my mind went to the word of God where it says, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That she have an all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. Even when it feels like your destination is not there because you've been delayed, God knows how to send the tailwind. I don't know about you today, but I'm looking for a tailwind. I'm expecting God to do a supernatural thing. Even though I can't see it in the air, my God knows how to do it. When the time is right. So what doesn't get right on the ground? God fixes in the air. If you believe that's it to this morning, give God some praise. God never forgets the righteous. The Bible is full of stories of righteous saints who held on to the promises of God even while being forgotten temporarily. Caleb, after having his promise delayed for 40 years, said, I feel as strong today at 85 than I did at 45. Now give me this mountain. Daniel prayed to God, and for 21 days, his answer was held up by the Persian uh, king, the commander of the air. But the angel said, I heard you from the first day. And God let me tag Michael. And he sent me here to help you and to give you your answer. God never forgets the righteous. Zion felt like they were temporarily forgotten in Isaiah 49, 14 through 16. The Bible says, but Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me and my Lord has forgotten me can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb surely they may forget yet I will not forget you see I have inscribed you on the palm of my hands your walls are continually before me isn't it good to know But even though we may feel like we're not on the mind of God, we're always in his hand. Let me tell you something. You you, you remind God of what's on his hands when you lift your hands. While going to on your journey. Never let me tell you something. You are not forgotten even when you think you are. God is concerned about the righteous. And then Martha... Martha felt that Jesus had forgotten about Lazarus. She said that if he had been there just a little bit earlier, Lazarus wouldn't have died. She said that I'm going to see him in the resurrection. And Jesus said, hold up, let me tell you something, Martha. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believe on me, though he be dead, yet shall he live. John the Baptist temporarily felt that he was forgotten while he was in prison. While he was in prison, he sent word to Jesus and asked, is he the one that will come or should we look for another? God never forgets the righteous. Jesus replies and sends word to him, tell him that the blind see and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And then finally, Jesus, the God man, born, shaped in the fashion of man, but he was God at the same time. 100% human and 100% God. On that day when he was on the cross from the sixth hour, the whole world turned black around him. 
And while being in that black situation, While being in that black, dark situation that looked unbearable, Jesus himself uttered from his humanity, Lama, Lama, Sabachthani. My God, my God. Why? 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 You ever asked the Lord why before? You told me to start this business told me to go into this economy in the marketplace and I started the business and it seems like all odds are against me, Lord, why? You told me to get married, Lord. You told me that this person was my husband, this person was my wife and since we've been married, all has been is trouble. Lord, why? Lord, you gave me this position that I prayed for and I wanted it and I longed for it. But Lord, it seems like all hell has broke loose. Lord, why? Have you ever been there? Well, you are in a comfortable place, in a familiar place, because Jesus himself got there. He said, Lord, why have you forsaken me? And it was not that he was forsaken. It was that God could not look at sin. So while Jesus was upon the cross, he turned his back to his son, and his son felt estranged from him. But I tell you something, on that third day, the why made sense, for he was wounded for our transgressions. We won't be here long today. He was bruised. For my iniquity and the chastisement of my peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. If you believe that tomorrow, this morning, give God some praise. I tell you to give him some more glory. If you believe it, give him some praise. See, God knows how to do his work on a time frame that fits an overarching plan. Though you may not comprehend and intuitively understand what God is doing from point A to B, God is still controlling the chip. He's still controlling the chips. He sets up one, then he takes down another. The heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord, and he turns it, and whatsoever direction he so desire. While I was preparing this message, God said, go and tell my people that I never forget the righteous. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well. If you believe that it's going to be well for you, I dare you to get in a frenzy this morning. I dare you to act like you believe it in, even though it's, hey, you're having a hard time holding on to it. I dare you to act ugly and let the, make, let the Mac makeup run down your face. I dare you to mess up that hairdo and give God some glory this morning because you know that if it had not been for the law, who was on your side, where would you be? But in our main text, Esther chapter 6 verse 1, the text says, I'm not lost. God never forgets the righteous. The text says that on that night. Now, you have to know that there must have been something that happened prior to that because the text references a night. And if there was a night, there had to be a day. And verse 5 deals with the day. But verse 1 deals with a night. You know, we've been made endure for a night. We've been made continue 
through the night. But look at somebody and tell them joy is going to come in the morning. Listen here, on that night, could not the king sleep? Now, if you back up just a few verses in chapter 5, we'll start at uh, verse 9. It says, then went Haman forth that day and with a glad heart, but Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate. That he stood not up nor moved for him. He was full of indignation against Mordecai. Nevertheless, Haman refrained himself, and when he came home, he sent and called for his friends. And Zeresh, his wife, and Haman told them of the glory of his riches and the multitude of his children, and all the things wherein the king had promoted him, and how he had advanced him above the princes and servants of the king. Haman said, Moreover, yea, as to the queen, did not let no man come in with the king unto the banquet until tomorrow, and I am invited unto her also with the king. Yet all this availeth me nothing so long as I see Mordecai, that Jew sitting at the king's gate. Then said Zeresh, his wife, and all his friends, they concocted a plan. They said, Let a gallow be made. That was 75 feet high. Let a, let, a, let a gallow be made. Let a pole be made so that we can hang Mordecai on it. So on that day, there was a plan that was set up by uh, Haman's wife and all of his friends to kill Mordecai. They were trying to destroy all of the Jews. See, God gave Saul a plan. He told him to kill all of the Amalekites. But Saul did not obey God's plan, and he saved King Agag, and there were some others, some writers say, that was, that was spared as well. And the Amalekites always fought Judah. Every time Judah would get a promise or get territory, they'll always come and fight them. So he put together a decree with the king, Haman did, so they could kill all of the Jews, and on March the 7th, they were supposed to annihilate all of the Jews. But Esther was on the throne as well. And Esther was a Jew. So Esther was working with Mordecai and God. And the king did not know what was going on. And uh, Haman was working with the king to, distra- to try and destroy Mordecai. But the Bible says that on that night, after they had concocted their plan to kill Mordecai. On that night, God got into the sleep of the king. You know, God knows how to get the heart of the king and turn that thing. And he knows how to keep your boss up at night just to give you a promotion. He knows how to turn things in your favor. He knows how to let that application that you submitted fall on the ground with all the other papers and then end up back on the, on the desk in order for yours to be on the top. God knows how to travel the sleep of the person that has power to bless you. And it says, and he commanded the book of records of the chronicles and they were read before the king. Now the king could have called for a concubine from his harem. To help him get to sleep. Amen, somebody. He could have called for some wine or some alcohol or something in order to help him get to sleep. He could have called for some dancers or had astrologers come and the aristocrats come to help him get some sleep. But on this night, when God troubled his sleep, the Lord told him to get the book. Go and get the book of the Chronicles. And when he got the book of the Chronicles, he read it. In verse 2 it says, And it was found written that Mordecai had told of the plan of Bigthan and Teresh, who tried to assassinate and kill the king. See, Bigthan and Teresh represents enemies in the midst of confusion. While there is always production moving forward, there's always going to be a group of Big fans and terrestrials. 
Regardless of what's taking place and what kingdom it is and what organization it is, there's always going to be somebody whose express purpose is to destroy what is taking place. But God always has a Mordecai. Always have some faithful son or some faithful daughter who's there watching what is taking place. And Big Thane and Teresh had a plan. They were going to kill the king, but Mordecai overheard it. And the king said, what honor and dignity did we give unto Mordecai? What did we do for him? Did we bless him? Did we honor him? Did we favor him? Did we speak a promise upon his life? And it said, and the king said, what honor and dignity have been done to Mordecai? Then said the king's servant that minister unto him, there is nothing done for him. We did nothing for him. Look at your neighbor and tell him, God... Never forget the righteous. And the king said, who is in the court? Who is that person that I see over yonder way in the court? And they told the king, now Haman was come to the outward court of the king's house to speak unto him about killing Mordecai. So the person that was in the court on that night that the Lord troubled the sleep of the king was the same person who on that day wanted to try and kill Mordecai. God knows how to take all of the pieces and put them together just to bless you. I don't know about you this morning, but I believe that if the Lord is on my side, I believe this morning that if God is fighting for me, then who can be against me? The Bible says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, that the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And I don't know about you this morning, but the enemy is coming in like a flood. But I see God lifting up a wall. I see God lifting up a standard. I see God opening up a door. And he's going to fight against those that fight against you. If you believe that this morning, give God some praise for fighting on your behalf. And the text says that after the king sees Haman in the court, he calls Haman and tells him to come in. And he says... Haman came in in verse King and, and verse 6, and it says, And the king said unto him, What shall be done unto the man that the king wants to honor? The king was getting ready to bless Mordecai. But Haman thought that this blessing was going to be his. Huh. This reminds me of Brother Joseph. Joseph, at the end of his life, said, What you meant for evil. God turned that thing for my good. Yes, I had to be in a pit. Yes, I had to deal with being hated. Yes, I had to deal with being rejected. Yes, I had to spend some time in Potiphar's stinking house. Yes, I had to go through Potiphar's wife trying to destroy my character. But I'm so glad that when the story is over, and when the dust settles, and when the smoke clears, that I'm now the second person in charge in the kingdom. What you thought was going to hurt me, what you thought was going to break me, what you thought was going to destroy me, what you thought would make me cry, what you thought would make me give up, what you thought would stop me from fighting is giving me more power. And guess what? I'm not bitter either. Because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. I come to tell somebody this morning to wait on God. You may not see it. You may not feel it. You may not sense it, but just around the corner, God's got a blessing with your name on it. 
and I heard God say that the person that wanted to destroy you so they can get your blessing, you're going to get their blessing and you're going to destroy them by your faith. Let me tell you today, if you hold on to the Lord, if you just keep on trusting, if you keep your faith high, if you keep your spirits high, when the time is right, God knows how to turn some stuff around. God knows how to bless you even while you're being hit from the left and from the right. Trouble when you come, trouble when you go, trouble in the morning, trouble at night. But if you just hold on, good God Almighty, if you just hold on, if you just hold on, high five somebody and tell them, neighbor, if you just hold on, God will turn it around. If you just hold on, God will bless you. He'll bless you in the city. He'll bless you where you're going. Wherever your feet shall trod, God will give you that territory. If you believe it, shout yeah. If you believe it, shout yeah. Yeah. Give him glory in this place. If you believe it, give God glory. Give him honor in this place. Hallelujah. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Let the saints praise. Let the saints praise. Let the saints praise. If you feel like you've been forgotten, if you're waiting on the Lord, let the saints praise. I hear God saying, let my people praise me. Open up the book and begin to call 
some names. I see Sarah Tardy here. I see Elder Wilson. I see Patricia Lester. I see, good God, Diana Goss. I see Joanna McCoy. I see Curtis Terry. If your name is in the book, if God is going to deliver you, if you got something up before the Lord, I dare you to call out your name and say, Lord, while you're blessing others, don't forget about me. While on others, thou art calling, please don't pass me by because I've been in the storm for too long. I've been in trouble for too long. I've been fighting for too long. But my name is getting ready to be called. Call out your name. Give it to God. Tell him to bless you. He's going to remember you. and say let the royal apparel be brought that which the king usually wears let the person ride on the king's horse let the royal crown which the king wears be brought let this apparel and the horse be delivered into the hands of a noble prince let the prince array the man with the king's garment and crown let the man be brought on the king's horse through the street of the city and let them proclaim before him, thus shall it be done to the man whom the king honors. Haman thought that he was going to get that blessing, but that blessing that he was talking about, that thing that he wanted was going to end up upon Mordecai. So on that same night when the morning came, we see Mordecai walking in with the king's robe on. He's walking in and riding in on the king's horse. And the apparel has been placed on him. What the devil meant for evil, God's going to turn it for your good. He's going to upset your setup and set up your upset. If you believe it, shout yeah! He's going to do it. He's going to do it. I dare you to this morning. I dare you this morning. If you believe that, run down to this altar. Give God some glory. We're getting ready to pray. And we're going home. But if you believe that he's going to set up your upset and upset your setup, give him some glory. Haven't seen, ears have not heard what the law has in store for you. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what the law has in store for you. How about this? Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God. I don't have no talk back to my church this morning, but God, God, El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Tiskanu, God, yeah, yeah, God, yeah, 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 God knows how to bless you. Lift your hands, lift your hands. Open your mouth and from the depths of your soul, from the bottom of your heart, shout yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, to your will. Yes, to your way. Yes, 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 yes. Do it, God. 